America's only Irish station, RadioIrish.com. This is Bob Delacoe here, wishing you all a happy Halloween. And sure isn't Halloween great crack altogether, Bob. Sean McCarthy here, as we celebrate the ancient Irish and Celtic festival of Samhain, which, as I recall my own youth growing up in Dublin, is a time to construct bonfires outside, Bob, and set them ablaze. And a time to mimic the dead, Sean, by disguising ourselves in sinister costumes so as to ward off all roaming spirits. You mean I can't have my Halloween nip after all? Not that kind of spirits, Sean. The other type. (laughs) You know, ghosts and the undead. Oh, them. Good. I mean, not so good. Not good at all. Especially if you account for the legend of Stingy Jack, Sean. A story which hails from the west of Ireland. Imagine that. Who would have believed that a pumpkin head would become a most striking symbol of Ireland's past? Much like the shamrock, in a way. The Jack of Lantern. Old Stingy Jack himself. But it wasn't always a pumpkin, Bob, was it? No, it wasn't a pumpkin at all originally. In fact, when Irish immigrants came to America, they carried with them their Halloween traditions, including the legend of Stingy Jack, from which came the jack-o'-lantern. You see, to ward off malevolent spirits during Samhain, the Celtic tradition was to cut out the inside of a turnip and fashion a human head, then light the inside with a burning ember or coal. Placing the image of Stingy Jack at the foot of your door outside was meant to keep roaming ghosts away, all except the desperate spirit of Stingy Jack himself. Who, as legend goes, remains trapped forever, wandering the netherworld between heaven and hell. Ah, the legend of Stingy Jack. Shivers to the hairs on the back of me head, Bob. Once upon a time, as the story would have it, In the county of Sligo, on the west coast of Ireland, there lived a man called Jack Flint, whose fists were as tight as stone, whose eyes were as red as flame, and who was so mean with his money that even the bankers were indebted to him. Aye, so they called him Stingy Jack. As mean as ginger, so he was. Look, there he is now, as tight as knickers. Stingy as flint, so he is, that fella. Go on, you selfish old git, ya. Yeah, there he is, look at him. Go on, you selfish git, ya. Okay, okay, we get the point. Jack was not known for his generosity. However, he did spend money, but only on himself. (laughs) And on beer, mostly. Beer and whiskey. He was always drunk, so he was. Off his tulip. (laughs) Toasted from Sunday to Monday. Sure even his hangover had a hangover. Blitzed half the time, bombed the other. A drunk of substantial proportions. Langered to the gills. Shameful altogether. (laughs) Stingy Jack was also well known throughout the land as being a most deceitful chancer who could spin you a tall tale, sell you a small house, and vanish by the time you knew about the pyrite. A con man at large, indeed so brazen were his wheelings and dealings, that even the devil himself got word of Jack's beer-fueled carry-on. The devil was so envious of the rumours about Jack that he decided to pay him a visit to see if the stories were true. It was dark out, and the street before him lay silent. Not a soul about. Jack was very drunk again, and had just left the pub for the night. When all of a sudden, he stumbled upon something lying on the side of the road. It was the devil himself. Ah, no. You you, you haven't come from his soul already. Sure, Sure, I'm having too much of a good time here on Earth. Leave me alone. Go away. Help! Jack screeched and pleaded when he suddenly realized that the devil had come to claim his wretched soul and take him away, kicking and screaming to the underworld. Half resigned to his fate, Jack begged and groveled for one final earthly pleasure. You wouldn't mind if I had myself a last-ditch point or two, would you? Me me throat is patched, and where you're dragging me is quite hot, I believe. So, so I need all the refreshment I can get. Uh, would you mind terribly if I had another pint or two down at the local? Uh, something to wet me lips as we travel. 
With little reason to deny the pathetic last request, the devil decided to amuse himself a bit and whisked Jack off to the local pub, buying him round after round until Jack was off his noggin again. <laughs> I have the drambuia noise. And when last call for pints came, call. Jack turned to the devil, open-mouthed, and gasped. <gasps> Bleeding in there. Last call? Well, 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 knock me dead and stretch me down. But, but it, it appears I left me wallet back at the ranch. Uh, m my sincerest of apologies, Mr. Devil. Uh, but, but I'm afraid you, you'll have to pay for the lot yourself on this occasion. Jack suggested that the devil turn himself into a silver coin with which to pay the bartender. The devil reluctantly agreed, and just as the devil transformed, Jack swiftly jammed the coin into his pocket, which also contained a single crucifix. The power of the cross prevented the devil from escaping his form as a coin. Right. I have some demands of my own. You'll stay there now in me pocket unless you agree to spare me soul from the flames of hell for all eternity. Again, reluctantly, the devil agreed and was freed from Jack's pocket. And so, days turned into nights and months to years. Stingy Jack continued to live a flagrant and reckless life, bringing mayhem to wherever he could be found and ripping off everyone in sight while he sipped champagne from a balcony. Eventually, Jack grew old. Then one day, he simply died. As Jack's soul prepared to enter the kingdom of God, some strange things happened before him, and he was suddenly stopped in his tracks. You'll not be coming in here now because of your shameless life of debauchery, pillage and rape. Go on now. Off with you where you belong. Off you go now. There's nothing for you here. Jack was refused entry to God's heaven. Now, in a hapless twist of fate, his only other hope for shelter was hell itself. Sobbing and cringing before the gates of hell, Jack begged the devil to let him in. Ah, oh, come on, Mr. Devil. I was only joking before. Look, I'm even sober now. Haven't I traded me drinking days in for a monthly subscription to Live Dry by Dribbles Mackenzie? I'll be grand, so I will. Uh, just let me in. The Devil, unwilling to go back on his word, refused point-blank to claim Jack's miserable soul. Furthermore, in order to warn everyone else who might come across Jack, the devil thrust into Jack's outstretched hands one burning ember from the flames of hell itself, instantly scorching Jack and branding him as a demon of the netherworld. As the darkness began to creep up all around him, threatening to swallow him up without sight, Jack quickly hollowed out a turnip and flung the one burning ember inside. And forevermore, the tormented soul of Sligoman Jack Flint now roams the haunted plains of Earth in a twisted dimension between heaven and hell, with one burning ember inside a hollowed turnip to light his way. With all else around him lying in pitch darkness, each and every Halloween, Jack Flint returns to half-blindly follow the path of glowing turnips scattered throughout the land in his infamous honor. And as you stare upon the image of your Jack of Lantern this Halloween, waiting for Jack Flint to come passing by your doorway, just remember Jack's own final words before the lights went out. One burning ember. Oh, you're the very devil of a devil, so you are. <laughs> <laughs>